Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Welcome, 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 welcome. We have just gone live for our 11th session. Can you believe it's been 11? People are coming in now. I can see lots of people arriving. Hello, Polly, Pippa, Ollie, Lucy. Hello, everybody. So I'll let you all get in and get comfortable. Make sure you can hear us. Make sure you're sitting nice and comfortably. Get a drink if you'd like, get cozy. It's cold out there, even though it's May. So make sure you're all wrapped up warm and ready for a bit of fun. We're really looking forward to it. It's been quite a while now. So when everybody's in and ready, we can get started. We've got at least oh, well over 20 people already. This is wonderful. People still pouring in. Hello, Claire. Hello, Deborah. I can see some people have found the chat. It's nice to be back. Hello. Hello, Elliot. Hello, Lucy. Hello, everyone. I can see a hello from Deborah, but if I remember rightly, that's not a Deborah. That's a somebody else. I just can't remember your actual name. Hello, John and Asha. Good to see you again. Hello, Ella. That was it. Thanks, Ella. Hello, Ella. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it wasn't Deborah. <laughs> hello, Henry. Hello, hello. Oh, lovely to see so many people. Ah, oh, happy birthday to Michael for last Sunday. Hello, Jesse. Jesse, who is labeled as Matt, will remember that one as well if we can, Lizzie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry if we do get your names wrong. We only see the names that you're signed up with. So we do our best, but apologies if we're wrong. Just tell us, tell us your real name. We'll try again. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Beatrix. Can't wait to start. Oh, me neither. I'm so excited. It's been a little while, hasn't it? It's been a month now, but it just makes our sessions even more special. So it makes me very happy. Hello, Lauren. It's World Bee Day today, says Lauren. What a great day to be here. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So <laughs> <I bad. apologize. laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. Lots of people. We're starting to level off a little bit now. Hello, Ruben. Hello, Tyler. Hello, Phoebe. I'm just going to let a little bit more people come in. Just let everyone get settled. Check my emails in case anybody's saying I'm stuck. But no, no, we're all good. Everybody's coming in nicely. Perfect. Ooh, Henry's been learning about bees in school. Yeah. That's cool. Isn't that nice? I love this. I love that. Bees are fascinating too. They're so clever. Lots to learn about bees. I saw a lot of news recently about bees learning to play football, which just blew my mind. So Google what? that when you get a minute. <laughs> Hello, Maya and Kieran. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I know it is mad. It is well worth a little internet search, that one. It's good fun. <laughs> okay, I think we're just about ready to start. What do you think, Lizzie? Let's do it. I can't wait. <laughs> Amazing. Right, I'm going to pass to Lizzie so she can say what we're up to today uh, and let us get started. Alrighty, so hi guys, welcome back to Explorers at Home. Um, my name is Lizzie and joined with me is Hello, I'm Josie. <laughs> and we are from Surrey Wildlife Trust. So this is our monthly club now, which we always look forward to. It comes around so quickly, which is perfect. Um, and each week we have different themes, but there's always a game, a craft, a sound involved, and even a challenge. Um, so I'm going to pass you back to Josie for, to explain how you guys can get involved if you are new, because we always do get some new people, which is lovely. So hi, guys. Wonderful. All right. Thanks, Lizzie. So I'm going to do a really quick introduction because I know so many of you have been before. Um, but generally, I just need to say every time this session is being recorded. Um, we can't see you, though, so don't worry about that. And you can't um, get in touch with each other, but you can send us messages and you can see us and hear us. Hopefully, if anything goes wrong, you can send us messages through the chat. So if you haven't found the chat yet, it's just a little button at the bottom of your screen looks like a speech bubble. And if you tap or click that, then you should see something pop up. You can send us messages through there. We can see your messages. You can't see each other's, but we can read them out. We can share them with everyone. And it's really nice to hear what you're thinking. So if you like, um, pop some thoughts in there as we go along. We might ask you to put some things in as well. If that doesn't work for you, don't worry, because it's not going to be important to the session. You don't need that to be able to join in and play the games as well. Uh, we will also have some polls too, and the polls we will explain when we do our first one. They're like questions that pop up on the screen, and you can select your answers and submit, and we can play games that way as well. Is there anything else I need to say? No, nothing really. We can't see you. We can't hear you, so you can relax. All right. <laughs> Lovely. You guys can be in your pyjamas and we wouldn't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> I 
this week's theme is helping wildlife at home and you don't even need a garden to help wildlife which is why it's so awesome and we thought it would be a great theme to have um so let us know how you guys help wildlife at home in the chat because i'm sure we'll take a look as we go through um but our first poll is to see what you guys think wildlife needs to survive. Now, this one's a bit different to other ones that we've done before. This one is multiple choice. So you can choose more than one answer. If you haven't used the poll before, simply click on the answers that you think and then press submit when you're done. So the question is, what does wildlife need to survive? We have water, food, TV, friends or mates and shelter. So pick what you think. You can select all five if you wanted, if you think that's what the right answer is. Have a talk together. And if you don't want to use the poll, you can just shout at the screen as well. Um, <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Put it in the chat too, if you want. Um, and yeah, and if Perfect. it does get in the way and you want to see what's on the screen, you can move it. So if you press the top bar of the poll, you can move it out the way. Yeah, and if you're on a phone, then it might fill the whole screen, but you can tap to swap between the poll and uh, us at the top. There's a little tab there to let you choose between which one you would like to see at the time. Make sure you click submit, otherwise we don't get your answers, but we can see the answers coming in as you vote. We've got loads of votes. Nearly everybody's already done because you're so good at this by now. And if you're watching this on the recording, you won't see the polls come up because they're not part of the recording. So I'm sorry about that, but you can always play along because you don't need to, to see the poll for it to work as Lizzie did so beautifully. She will always read out the question and you'll get to play along just the same. All right, I think we're done with that. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> We've got lots of people in the chat saying TV. Let's see <laughs> what people voted for. Here you go. Okay, so most of you guys voted for food and water is pretty close as well. There's quite a few votes for shelter and friends and one or two for TV. Um, so the answer is pretty much nearly all of them. I think you can guess which one probably isn't the answer. It's multiple choice because animals or wildlife need water, they need food, they need friends or mates so they can um, make new little babies and also <laughs> shelter, <laughs> so somewhere to live. So that's what wildlife needs. And that's what we wanna think about. If we have space outside our homes, whether it's a garden or a small patch of grass at the front by the road, think about what that could do for wildlife. What does it provide for them? So awesome work, guys. We like to start off with a, a sort of question poll to begin, and then we head into probably one of my favorite parts of this is the game. So ready for the game, everybody. Woo! Let's do this. I'm going to share my screen. Do let us know in the chat if you can't see um, what comes up. So it will come up in just a moment. Okay. Here we go. It should have popped up on your screen. And the game is called Who Lives Here? So for this, we're going to show you a nest or um, somewhere where an animal lives. And we're going to show you three options of what might live there. And we want you to guess who has made this home or who lives in this thing. There's lots of different things coming up. Have a guess. So the first one is this lovely nest of sea, sort of in a tree shrubby thing. And there's three options. So is it a yellow necked mouse who lives on the ground? Is it a dormouse who's arboreal? He lives up in the trees or she? Or is it a gray squirrel? So a poll will come up with either options A, B or C. So A is the little wood mouse, B is the dormouse and C is the squirrel. Click on the one that you think made that nest and we'll see what you guys think. This we have a, this is a good one, Lizzie. We've had a question in from Ella saying, how big is the nest in the tree? Which is a really oh, sensible question. That is, but that might also give away what it is. So we haven't put the sizes in, but I would say it's about this big, if that about helps. Big. Yeah, about the size of maybe a small football. That maybe a small melon like one melon, of those melons a better one yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> have a guess have a look at where it is that might be a clue sometimes what it's made of is a clue or there might be some other signs about in other pictures and if you don't know give it a guess give it a try 
we're always up for people giving it a go and if you get it right that's okay and if you get it wrong that's also okay it's just yeah. for fun it's not a test is it we're not at school no. today <laughs> 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 nearly everyone's voted we've got a couple people left so if you're still deciding last few seconds three two one let's see what's the answer lizzie <laughs> Well, most of you guys said B, the dull mouse, and I can say that you guys are right. So the little dull mouse makes this nest in the summer. It's so cool. They make it full of um, sort of dead leaves or even green leaves, branches, um, vines, and most importantly, they use honeysuckle to make it. That's a really key thing for them. They'll drag it from far away to make this little nest. And that's where they will have their little babies. Um, and then in the winter, they hibernate like hedgehogs and things, but they hibernate, they don't hibernate up in the trees like this, they hibernate on the ground. Can you believe it? In like a little um, hole in the ground, so a little dent, or even in log piles. Um, they're incredible little creatures. They come out at night, and they've got fluffy little tails they're so sweet and they're also protected they aren't doing so well because they like connected trees and shrubs and hedges and because we don't have much of that anymore a lot of our trees aren't connected they can't get about as easily they get eaten by predators a lot so they like places where you've got trees interlocking so look out for that when you're on a walk if you're in a woodland keep an eye out for them they might even you might even spot some boxes that are put out for them so these boxes for dormice don't actually have a hole in the front like they do for birds they have a little hole at the back so the dormouse can climb up the tree trunk or trunk of whatever it is and they can go into the secret entrance at the back um, but if you do see these, they are protected, remember, so we can't touch the boxes or disturb them, but keep an eye out for them. They're pretty cool. So that is our little door bus. Very sweet. <laughs> okay, next one. Who, has, who lives here? Who's built this nest? It's full of leaves. There's a bit of grass as well. It's on the ground. Is it um, A, the badger, B, the stoat, or weasel, sorry, weasel. Or C, who he thinks made it? A, it's B, a very C. messy nest, isn't it? There's not much planning looking like that. Or maybe actually inside, it's the tidiest nest ever. And just the outside's very well camouflaged. So blended <laughs> in with those leaves chucked on top. Well, I think, so this, whatever made this, it is for camouflage to protect it when it's um, nesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It does look like a cosy little corner, doesn't it? You could just snuggle down in those leaves, maybe sleep for a very long time when it's cold. I'm giving clues now, I'll stop. Yeah, stop it, Josie. <laughs> <laughs> We've got lots of votes coming in. We're nearly done on the voting. I'm going to give you a little bit more time. So that one's a bit bigger. Somebody's asked how big it is. It's a bit bigger, so... That's about. the corner of a garden. Look at the bricks in the corner of the picture. That gives you an idea as well. So, so at least 30 centimetres, like a ruler, at least that big along yeah. the sides. Yeah, so quite big. Quite right. big. But Three, is it big enough to be a badger? Two. One. <gasps> Go. Let's see. Oh, look at that. So most of you guys said C. And I feel like... You are right. Definitely a hedgehog nest. It's a real one that someone sent in to us um, of a hedgehog nesting in their garden. And that's what they made. That is the nest a hedgehog made over winter. Um, these guys make little nests in the summer made of grass and things. But in the winter for their hibernation, they make nests just like that one full of deciduous leaves. So the leaves that fall to the ground in the autumn. They're perfect for making their nests. And it looks super messy. But actually, they drag all these leaves to their corner, their um, undisturbed area, whether it's like this in a corner of a garden, could be in a hedge, under bramble bushes. They drag them all um, under their chins. And then once it's big enough, they're like a big mound, the hedgehog will go inside, like crawl inside, make a little tunnel. And when it's in the middle, it will spin round and round and round and round until it basically compacts all the wall. So the wall of the nest is solid 
and it keeps all the warm air in while it gets colder and colder over winter. So these guys, it looks messy and it looks like just a pile of leaves, but actually there could be a hedgehog sleeping away or hibernating away over winter in that. And it's nice and cozy because they can insulate their home. So that's cool. why it's so important when it comes to bonfire night in the autumn. That's when they're just making these nests and people make these lovely big hedgehog homes for them just before bonfire night. And it all goes wrong when people think, actually, no, that's a bonfire. So it's going to get set on fire. So that's why we really ask that people look, check their bonfires. And the best thing to do, although it's a lot of effort, is to take it apart and put it back together again before you build your bonfire and set it on fire. So make Maybe even just store the stuff somewhere and then put it together on the night that you're going to be using it. It's the safest way to do it because our poor hedgehogs need our help. What's, the, what's this big black gap, Lizzie? What's going in the gap? Well, that's obviously their natural nest. And if you guys wanted to give them a little extra space to nest at, um, if you do have a garden or even in your school grounds, you can leave hedgehog homes like this one. And they either have a little tunnel on the outside or a little sort of hallway, as you can see, they go in through the hole there and then they sleep on the other side. And that's to protect them from predators that might want to get their paws in to, um, to eat the hedgehog if they're hungry. So you can always leave a hedgehog house if you want um, and put them in a quiet place in your garden. And if you want them to really, really move in, make sure there's a good pile of leaves and straw available so they can use it to um, make their nest. Um, that's a really good tip if you wanted to. There's I know lots some of, of love the hedgehogs in the, in the chat right now. It's very sweet. Yay, I can't see it at the moment, so I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. If you did though already, I love hedgehogs. Okay, so. Most of us knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number three guys, who lives here? So this is a nest made and it looks like there's birds in there, but what bird is it? Is it A, a long-tailed tit, B, a kestrel or C, a blue tip. Who do you think has made this nest? You can see there's moss in there. They've got some sort of fur or wool from sheep. They've got some strings too, um, a string that we might leave out. Have a guess. Have a have Lots of people think that the babies inside are a helpful clue. We did they have are. some pictures of nests without babies, but it's so hard to tell. Only really experts are very good. Or if you've got a book that can help you to know which nest is which without any eggs or babies inside. So we thought we'll help you out. We'll have a picture with the babies in. And look how but hungry even, they are. <laughs> they are so hungry. But even they don't look like adults. They're starting to look like their adult selves, but they don't look exactly. So it is still a bit tricky. Aren't very but have true. a go, guys. Have a guess. That is true. Look at the colours. That's my... I'm going to stop. I'm giving so many clues today. I can't help it. You are. You've been Three, nice. <laughs> two, one. Last second for votes. If you've got no idea at all, throw a vote at us. See what happens. <laughs> and let's go. Okay, most of you guys said C. And if you didn't know what a kestrel was, I should have said it's a lovely little bird of prey, about sort of yay high, maybe about that big. And they hover just like in that picture. So if you ever go on a walk somewhere and you see a bird hovering in the same spot, just flapping its wings, that is probably a kestrel looking for food like mice and things. They're beautiful. Um, so most of you guys said C and you are right, it is our blue tip nest. Um, um, we have a treat for you after this game to show you some live footage. But if you want to help blue tits, normally they nest sort of in trees. So where there's small gaps, they like small little holes to get into. But obviously we don't, all our, our trees, if they've got holes in, sometimes we have to take them down because they're not safe. So we, they don't have as many spaces to nest anymore. So instead you can give them a bird box. So you don't need a garden. You can put it on the side of your home if you've got um, sort of outside walls or even on a fence, on trees. These are perfect. And blue tits aren't too fussy. They like, they love nest boxes as long as they've got a small hole. These guys are a lot smaller than other birds. And if they had a bigger hole for their nest box, it means predators might be able to get in or other birds might kick them out. So it's always good to have small holes. Um, we'll give you a link for our website that shows you how to make nest boxes like this. It's really fun to do. You just need a big plank of wood and then you cut it up 
and make a hole in things. It's really a good activity to do. And it tells you where you can put them as well in your garden. But they do like sheltered spots like this. They like a clear flight, flight path so they can fly in super quickly without being spotted by predators. Um, and they like uh, being sort of mid height, so maybe two or four meters up in the air between that. That's where these guys like to nest. All birds nest at different heights in different locations. So it's not always easy to, um, to have one box for everyone. But yeah, give that a go if you haven't got them. Definitely put a bird box in. Loads okay. of people in the chat saying they've got blue tits in their garden, which is really nice. So maybe if you don't have a box already, you could add a box. And if Definitely. not, just enjoy the blue tits. We might need to be a little bit quicker, Lizzie, because it's already 20 past. Oh my goodness, let's go. <laughs> right, we've got a picture here of a tree with a hole and there looks like there's a liquid come up, coming out of it. So is it, does it belong to a bat home? Is it a bat roost? Is it a woodpecker home, a woodpecker nest inside? Or is it a, oh, my brain's gone again. <laughs> mandarin mandarin duck i've been trying to help lizzie remember the name of this duck because it keeps slipping her mind and my way is that mandarin is kind of like tangerines and like that they're a little type of orange and i imagine because when they sit like that these ducks are very round and squidgy looking maybe my brain's just a bit weird but they always make me think of tangerines and then i remember mandarins they're actually from china and you know there's more of these ducks now in this country than there are where they originally came from because they're doing so well happily living here and they're basically part of our wildlife now people have kind of just accepted it because they seem very happy here and they're not causing too much trouble as far as mm. I'm aware so let them be yeah and what's really cool is that all three of these creatures actually nest in trees so it is a bit tricky if you um, don't know what to look for but that's what this game's for this is so, maybe our most difficult one, actually. So yeah. good luck, everybody. I think. Should we give them five seconds? So get in your fact, votes in, I'm, guys. In your last few seconds, I'm going to give Tyler a little shout out because Tyler knows exactly what to look for and has even put it in the chat to us as exactly how he knew which one it is. So uh, well done to Tyler, everybody. All right, let's see. Here we go. There's our results. Okay, so most of you guys said B, and then some votes for A and C. Well, like we said, all three of them nest in a tree, so that's a pretty good start. Um, the answer is, though, that it's a bat roost. So can you see that little sort of dribble of liquid coming out the hole? That is their wee, basically, and that's a really good sign for a bat roost, as if it's got that dribble sort of black stain to the bark, that means it's a there's a bats in there and you also look out for at the bottom of where they roost on the ground there's normally little bat droppings uh, or poo to look out for if you think you've got a roost so it was our bats and you can help bats at home too with a bat box these are great for bats um staying overnight if it's like a really windy harsh night like the the rain and wind that we've been having recently then they will use these boxes they'll climb up that little ladder at the bottom and then they'll stay inside overnight and then they'll swoosh out um, the next night when it's all clear. So you can always put a bat box up, put them up high, whether it's on a building or on a tree, and it gives them an option of somewhere to stay. They normally nest in trees, like in that picture. We've had some okay. questions. Do ducks nest in trees? And not many, there's only a couple of types of ducks that nest in trees, but that one is one of them. And when the chicks hatch, they can't fly yet. It's not like blue tits. They have to just leap, but because they're so small and fluffy, they kind of tumble down and they bounce and they're okay because they're so fluffy. They kind of fall a bit slower than you'd expect and they don't weigh much. So there's not much of a thud when they land. They just kind of bounce, roll away and then cheek, 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 off they go. Absolutely. What a start bonkers. to life. <laughs> I know, leap, <laughs> leap out of a tree hole. Well done. <laughs> okay, so who's hope? who lives here? Who's built these little holes in the ground? Is it an ant home? Is it a bee home, a mining bees home? Or is it a rabbit's home? 
Now, I can't tell you the size because it, well, maybe I will in about 10 seconds. I'll give you time to have a guess first, and then I'll tell you what size No, don't are. tell them the size. That's not the point. That's the biggest clue of all. <laughs> is it rabbit sized or is it ant sized? What do you think? <laughs> well, yeah, look fair, at the graph. That's look at the graph. Thing. You can get your own guesses. You can get your guesses there. Is it a small Lots of votes in. Call? In fact, most people have looked at the grass. They don't need your clue, Lizzie. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> We've got some true detectives among us. We do. We've got really good nature detectives in our group. Very, very clever people. Okay. Three, two. Still some votes. I don't want to cut you off. Go, 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 go. Okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> most of you guys said A for ants. Quite a few votes for B too. And even a vote for a rabbit. So the answer is that it's the bee's home. These are mining bees. So they're a type of solitary bee. So we have 270 types of bees in the UK. It's a lot of bees and 250 of them are solitary bees. How cool is that? We have so many and they're so important for like pollinating all our flowers and things. And these little mining bees nest in the ground. They dig these holes and they put their eggs in with some pollen and then they seal it up and then they come out and that's where their young will grow up. So it's really cool. And they always look out for little holes like that in your grass. If you want to help mining bees, make sure you leave some uh, bare patches in your garden on the grass or a little hill in the sun. Um, with lots of earth or sand and the mining bees and also other bees will use that to nest in. But they're not the only solitary bees. Some solitary bees nest up in the higher up. So it might be in bushes using bits of bramble twigs to make holes, it might be in trees. And you can help the other solitary bees by making bee homes. Maybe you guys have some of these already in your garden, but they're so easy to make if you've got them. You can use bamboo like in the top of the picture or you can drill holes into bricks of wood and put them against a, a fence or something. And you want to make sure it's in the sunny spot and it's sheltered as well from rain. And then these bees will fill all the holes up with eggs and pollen, and then they'll emerge next year when they're big enough. They're pretty cool. So if you want to help bees, have a little insect or bee home. As it's World Bee Day, I, I think that's a really good thing to do this weekend. <laughs> okay. Next one, who lives here? Now, this is a pretty random nesting creature. Whoops, shared results instead of relaunching there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. Carry on. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, who is nesting in there? Is it the robin? Is it a buzzard, a big bird of prey? Or is it a little house sparrow? So who's made this nest in a pretty random location? So it's in a kettle on the floor. I mean, it's a bit crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it's not where I keep my kettles, personally, no. <laughs> uh, or my teapots. I generally keep my teapots inside the house, but this one's clearly been thrown away at some point. And this bird has a bit of a habit of choosing strange places to nest. It's quite well known. We've seen this type of bird nest in um wellies nest inside uh watering cans and even inside cars underneath the wheels or under the bonnet and these are cars that are still needed by the people who own them so there's been difficulties <laughs> in making sure that do you really have to use that car can you leave it alone until the birds are finished so uh <laughs> a bit of a cheeky cheeky bird which gives you a little clue as well it does look like it's in a toilet, and I thought the same thing, Ellie. But, um, <laughs> but it's not a toilet. <laughs> it's in a teapot that's been thrown in the ground. <laughs> like the little song used to do in primary school, where I'm a little teapot. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie. I think you've just made my day doing I'm a little teapot for it. <laughs> All right, every, everybody's voted. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so most of you guys said either A or C. A few more votes for A. So that's the robin compared to the house sparrow. Now, the answer is the robin. They are so famous for nesting 
anywhere, pretty much anywhere. They nest really close to the ground. So that means anything is fair game pretty much to them. If you've got some wellies that are unused, like Josie said, they might nest in there. But if you've got a shed with a hole in, they might go into the shed quite a lot. They're really popular for going in really odd places. Um, so robins make these beautiful little cup shaped nests. Um, yeah, like I said, close to the ground. And then they have their chicks in there and then eventually they fledge. And you can help robins by giving them a bird box too, like with the blue tits, but these ones are a bit different. You can see they're open at the front. Robins love a really open area, like with the teapot, not toilet. Um, <laughs> and they build the nest all the way up so that it's easy to get in and out. And it's normally somewhere like in a hedgerow or a shrub, um, somewhere really well protected. Because as you can imagine with that big open box, it's quite susceptible susceptible that's the word mm -hmm. uh to predators maybe coming in so they're pretty incredible birds they're beautiful as well i love listening to them in the winter and if you want to help robins um you can put out one of these nest boxes and you can make them too they're really easy to make too they're nice and simple is this our last one does it we have this is we've got one more after this okay let's go 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 <laughs> who nests here it's like a weird shaped muddy strawy nest so We've got the wood mouse who lives on the floor. We've got, who's this one? A wasp, or is it the swallow? Now a clue is this is quite high up where it's placed. So it's high up, not on the ground. So does it look like a mouse nest, a wasp nest, or a swallow, which is a type of bird's nest? Have a guess, have a go. Shout out at the screen if you want. Mm -hmm. We might hear you if you shout loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell your family I said that. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> She's joking. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing okay. well. We've got lots of ideas, lots of thoughts in the chat as well, which is very nice. Ooh, I'm going to cool. give you another two seconds. Three, two, one. Here we go. Let's see. <laughs> Most of you said C, so the swallow. Well, I can tell you guys that you're right. It was the swallow. And there is a picture of some little swallow chicks in their nest. And Look how at cute their little they? white faces. Mm. <laughs> Could have not That's put my that best in impression. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys visit us in the summer. We've talked about them before. And they visit us to breed and then they go back south and they fly miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Um, and they make these nests out of mud and straw at the tops of sort of farm buildings. So whether it's um, like a barn or an outhouse or even under our home. So if you've got a house and that's the wall, they nest. If your roof goes over the wall, they'll nest just underneath it because it's protected from the wind and rain. They're called the eaves. So they might nest near you. Look out at the tops of houses as you go for walks everywhere because um, you might see these nests. And then these guys, like I said, make mud and straw. It's a bit weird, a bit different to other birds who you normally use moss. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you can always add your own. So if you did have a house with the slanting roof that goes over the wall and is protected, uh, can protect the nest, you can always put them there. Um, and it's like a little place, like a little ledge for them to start building their nest on as an option. And um, they're pretty cool, aren't they? And just look at their little faces. <gasps> okay, so <laughs> last one. Are you ready? Who lives here? It's a log pile. But this occurs naturally, so it could be a fallen branch or a fallen tree trunk. And we want to know who lives in it. Is it a ground beetle? Is it a newt? Or is it a toad? This is a tricky one, everyone. Remember this. It might be <laughs> the most difficult question we've ever asked. Hmm. Are we being mean? <laughs> You've got your evil villain hands ready. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of votes coming in. Let's see who wins on the voting. This might just be a popularity contest more than anything, this question. Yeah. We've got lots of votes coming in. Nearly everybody's already voted. Wow. Pow, pow, pow. Very quick. I was going to say, we um we had a look at our where we work now, Wood. Maybe you guys have been there, some of you. Mm -hmm. 
we went for a night stroll as a work team and we looked at all the ponds at night and we saw lots of newts we saw a toad swimming as well we don't normally see them swimming and we saw loads of beetles scurrying around as well on the on the uh woodland floor mm. and it was so cool it was awesome last seconds i think we're done let's go <laughs> okay so no most of you said c and quite a few of you said a and b and i can safely say you're all right. It was a trick question. <laughs> they all live in love piles. <laughs> so we've got, mean? Lots of, so we've got lots of invertebrates that love the log piles like beetles and slugs and worms and wood lice. They're awesome. I know quite quite a few guys, few of you guys might like mini bees hunting under logs, but also that's where things like amphibians, like our newts, our toads, and our frogs will live as well when they're on land. And even things like small mammals, the little mice, the dormouse, we said, hedgehogs, they all love a log pile. So if you have one already in your garden, maybe you can add another in a shady spot. Or if you haven't got one and you have a bit of space in a shady spot, why not add a little bit? It's great for wildlife. And if you want to level up, we've got a challenge. You can make a beetle bucket and we'll send this in our email. And it's basically making a hole in the ground putting either a bucket or not in with some stones, some logs, fill it up with either de um, leaves that are brown or um, bark chip. And then you put soil on top, like you're flattening a sand castle or something. And then you cover that with logs and it's where beetles can have lay lots of eggs and have their young. So it's a really good um, way to level up your log pile basically um but yeah so that is our game well done guys you did a brilliant job I'm gonna stop sharing now so hopefully you might be able to see us again um Josie should we give them their a, a nice surprise treat video yeah I think so it'll be really fun so I am going to just move some stuff out of my screen's way then I'm going to share my screen because if I go to our homepage, we've got something here I'm actually at Nalwood right now I'm going to share my computer sound as well and I'm going to share this one so because excited. we at Now Wood have got something very exciting at the moment. I hope you can see my big screen here moving around and this is our home page at the moment. This bit at the top changes all the time but if you scroll down a little way you get to here. You can Hopefully you can see my mouse and you can see a beautiful big round blue tick giving us a smile. And you can click for our wildlife webcam because we've got a blue tit box with some baby blue tits in it right now. And if my internet plays, here we go. This is them all oh, right now. They have got the mum is in, giving them some food. They've got both mum and dad feeding them at the moment, popping in every now and then. You can see we've got how many chicks was it, Lizzie? Oh my gosh. Well, we think there's 11, but what about if you guys take a look at them after the, <laughs> after the um, explorers at home, see if you can count how many there are there. They're incredible. They hatched maybe a week and a half ago. So nearly two weekends ago. And we were just looking at this. We're, they're about halfway through growing up in that nest box. And then they're going to fledge. And that's when they jump and just hope they can fly. Um, so they're pretty cool. Take a look when you've got time because the mum comes in with food and the dad and they also take away little bird poops. So when they do a little poo, they're in a little sack so it doesn't get stuck everywhere. And the parents pick it up and take it away because they want to put it as far away from the nest as possible to stop predators thinking, oh, there's some young birds in there. Mm, um, it's also pretty gross. It's amazing to watch, but I'm not sure I would want to collect poo with my mouth and take no. it away. <laughs> we were watching it the other day, weren't we? And one mm. sibling, there we go, <gasps> one sibling pooed on the other. And then it was stuck there for a while <laughs> till the parent cleared it. It was really funny. It is very <laughs> entertaining TV, I'll be honest. Look at all those hungry mouths. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11, is that 12? Am I right that there's another that one? That might there? be 12. Oh, you guys are going to have to look for us and let us know what you That's see. Nice. Send me emails um, if you see any updates as well. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> there's the poop. <laughs> <laughs> we should just so stop weird. watching Blue Tits Pooing now. We We've could be here for do. ages. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll give you guys oh, the link. Dear. It's really easy to find. Um, you take a look at yourselves. It's really interesting. Um, so 
our next bit is, of course, the craft. So it is craft time. I'm going to share my screen with you. Take a look. Oh, that wasn't me sharing it. That was just me bringing it up on my own <laughs> screen. Um, here we go. Here we go. So it should be on there now. Right, craft time is always my favourite. Sometimes it gets messy, sometimes water goes everywhere. You just never know what's going to happen. And this craft is all to do with this plant here. So have a guess. Do you know what this plant is? Put it in the chat for us that we'll have a look. What do you think this plant is? It looks very lush and green. I almost want to eat it. It looks very tasty yeah. there. Because well, you even... can eat it, Josie. That's you can. I think I've had this plant in soup before. I think mm, I've I even, I, yeah, I think I've even had it in wine before, which I'll, I'll be honest, it wasn't very nice actually. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should try that one again sometime if it's uh, made a bit, be bit better. <laughs> We've got, someone else says they make it into soup and into vegetable juice. Lots of people enjoying Ooh. this and loads of people know what it is. So go on then, give us the answer, Lizzie. Okay, it is stinging nettles. So these guys, and yes, we do get to eat it sometimes. Always eat it with a parrot, though. They know what to do or they can look it up. Or um, they can laugh when you get stung. Because <laughs> you can get stung, obviously, but the pain does go away. It's not the um, worst, is it? So if you want to put the poll up, Josie, we can get oh, an yeah. uh, idea of what people think. So we want to know, what do you think of nettles? Is it, yes, I love them. They're all right. No, I hate them. Or I don't care. So... <laughs> Have be a, honest we're not going to judge you if you if you be honest if you don't actually like them we're not going to tell you off uh, no. and if you don't care that's absolutely fine we're not here to go oh you should care we're not telling you that yet we want to know what you really think right now and then we're going to do our craft and we'll see if it changes your mind so let's let everybody vote we've got lots of votes coming in honest as you can we're not going to tell you off i promise <laughs> nearly done Three, two, one. There we go. This is Ooh. what people think. So we've got quite a few mixed response and that's all right. Like we said, we, some of you like it. Some of you think they're all right. Some of you hate them and some of you don't care. Um, so I put Very my honest. glass on and I can't use my laptop. So I'm going to take my gloves off, right? <laughs> Lizzie, you need a mouse. <laughs> So well, the reason why we wanted to do a craft with nettles is because they are pretty awesome. They are, not only can we do stuff with them, and um, which is what I can show you one option to do, but you can, they're also fantastic for wildlife. So if nettles are in a sunny spot, butterflies like the peacock, the small tortoiseshell, the comma, and the red admiral, they lay their eggs on them and that's what their caterpillars munch away at. Um, and get bigger and bigger until they become butterflies. And some of them only nest on nettles. So they're really important for our butterflies, which I'm sure we all love, or even love looking at the little caterpillars going along. <laughs> um, but they're also really good for other things as well. Aphids, which are little tiny green creatures, live on nettles and that's where ladybirds will go. They love eating aphids, bit of a food chain action, and they love um, waiting there for the, for the aphids. And then lastly, in the autumn, the seeds of nettles are great food for birds like the chaffinch and bullfinch and things. So it's they're really important for wildlife. And I know they do sting us sometimes, um, but we can either get a dock leaf or you can wash your hands if that's what's stung, or it just does go away. But I know it does hurt as well. Um, not the most fun, but it's not the end of the world either. I think I'd rather have all those butterflies in my garden and sometimes get stung than not have any nettles or any butterflies. I exactly. think I definitely choose that option. Okay, so it's craft time. I thought I'd show you. Um, so I've got some nettles here I um, just picked before we started the session. So that's a big nettle. Um, but there's also some things called dead nettles. So ones that don't actually sting. And they look a bit like this. So we've got a white dead nettle here. And you see it's beautiful, beautiful flowers there. It's lovely, isn't it? So they have flowers like this, white dead nettles. Whereas stinging nettles have droopy catkins. So that's a really good way to tell them apart. And there's a red dead nettle, which 
can I say these are both in my garden and the butterflies and bees love them. So keep an eye out for the dead nettles that don't sting. Um, but for this craft, we are gonna be making some nettle string. So this can be used for anything. I'm gonna use it to tie up some plants that are growing up a wall I have, or you can use them to tie your den together if you're out and about. You can even use them as a bracelet too. So what we're gonna do is you need um, some scissors to cut your nettles. You obviously might need some gloves because they do sting. They have tiny little hairs that are amazing at protecting them from animals eating them, but they do sting us. So you might want some gloves and you also need, oh, you need a jug of water like this one and a rock. So you can definitely find that out and about. So, as I said, I've been to cut my nettles. Do you want them about 50 centimeters tall? Can you see how tall that is? It's quite long. The longer your nettle is, the longer your string can be. So once you've got your nettle and you've cut it at the bottom, and remember, we will send you instructions. So don't worry if you don't remember everything, um, we'll send you instructions. Once you've got them, we want to take all the leaves off and the hairs because we're using the stem as our string. So we then take up all the hairs. Oh, I'll do it one way and I'll do it the other. Might be easier to say, there we go. So take off the hairs like this and the leaves. And once the hairs are gone, it shouldn't sting you. There might be the odd one left. So you can keep wearing gloves if you want. And then I'll take the top off. Okay, so. Hopefully I got rid of all the hairs. I'm going to take my gloves off now. You're going to find out. This is the, this is the fun bit. <laughs> okay, so once you've got your nettle um, stem like this, we're going to bash it with our rock. So you can do this outside or inside. I've got some newspaper down, so hopefully you can see that there. Right, so I'm going to... It feels all right, though. Doesn't feel like there's anything. Oh, I might be all right, Josie. That was see. brave. That was very brave. <laughs> okay, so we're going to bash it or really press down because this is separating or splitting the stem. And we want the outside of the stem. Inside, it's quite woody and pale. And that's not what we're going to use for this string. So I'm going to give it a good... Sounds like a good squish. scrunch when you squish it. Do you oh, yeah. have to do it so carefully, Lizzie, or can you just bash it like a lunatic? I mean, just go for it, you know, <laughs> just go for it. So, you did that okay. very carefully. I was very impressed, but I think I would just be bash, 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 bash. It's mainly because I've got water and my laptop on the table and I don't want <laughs> oh. to make too much movement. <laughs> Sensible. So hopefully you can see, I'm going to lift it up again. Hopefully you can see... We've got the skin of the stem, and then this is the middle bit here. So we're gonna take that apart. So we want the, the lovely outside skin. So we're gonna peel it. Look, it's quite and tricky, everyone. So if you do get a chance to do this, I would love to see what you make or oh, what yeah. you do with your string, because it's quite a fiddly thing to achieve. I'll be impressed. Ooh, um, there was some hairs. Okay, well, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't. Uh, get rid of all the hairs. It's a little tingly, right? <laughs> I knew this was a great suggestion for a craft when you said it, because we'll all get to see Lizzie get stung by nettles live on camera. Okay, it'll be all right. Well so, done. No rude words. You did very well. I'm going to hold it at the top. So that's <laughs> the string. We basically leave this out to dry until it shrinks a little bit. So we need it to dry. So fast forward to ones I made earlier. And if they're dry, they look a bit like, whoop, like this. There we go. Can you see? So completely shriveled, lovely. That's what we want because then we dunk it in water. And what do you know? I dunked one in water earlier. It's very Blue Peter style. So these have been shriveled and they've been in water as well. There we go. And once you've done that, so we've peeled them, we've taken this, we've crushed them, taken the skin off, we've dried them, and then we put them in water again till they're a bit more flimsy. We are going to make it. So you want to kind of fold it in half. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to pinch the top and we just twist the two ends together. Can you see those two ends there? We're going to twist them round and round. 
maybe you've done this before making other things so let us know if you've done something similar before or if you have done this before or you make things with nettles let us know in the chat someone's put that they um do bracelets with flowers which is a beautiful mm -hmm. idea love daisy flowers that'd be really nice and if this is a bit tricky for you to do with two hands i think it'd be a really nice thing to do with your family so if you get mm. like when you're doing if you've done knotted bracelets or anything like that before if you get one person to hold one end and then you can pull against that and tie it with two hands it means you've got two hands to do it rather than the twisty juggling that lizzie is doing very well for us here and one of my favorite facts about nettles i was thinking about this when you told me you were going to do nettle string lizzie mm -hmm. and i looked it up and i was remembering that before we had uh, cotton and all the sorts of fabrics that we've got now fabrics sometimes made of plastic even we had all of our clothes in medieval times were made of natural materials of course and this natural material was one of our native plants that we could turn into, into clothes. So for years and years and years, people used nettles for their clothes. And in some parts of the UK, it was the only type of clothing that they had. So they were wearing nettle clothes, which apparently when you work it, it's very soft and comfortable, but I can't get out of my head a really stingy jacket that's all itchy and keeps you awake and tingly. <laughs> Okay, that is weird, isn't it? But I guess it would be comfortable because they probably got rid of all the hairs. Yeah, they'll make it into a nice okay. soft fibre. Okay, so that is my twisting done. We then tie it off at the end with a little knot um, and it kind of holds it together and then just let it dry again. So that's my just done one and it will turn into something like this. So this is one I made yesterday. You see, and then they're really strong as well. So they should be good for, like I said, tying up dens if you're doing some den building out and about or just doing anything, to be honest. They're pretty cool. So let us know if you do get on with that, guys, or if you do anything with nettles because they are they are awesome. And like I said, you could always leave some nettles um, in your garden for wildlife, especially if they're in a sunny spot. That's what the butterflies love. Yeah, so, so if you're going to take nettles for this activity, we recommend that you will take some nettles from the shady patches in your garden and leave some nettles in the sunny patches mm -hmm. because that means you've left some beautiful ones for all those butterflies and the ladybirds so that all the wildlife can love them and enjoy them. And you've taken some nettles out of the shady patch, which isn't so good for wildlife, but really good for you. And maybe you want to make some soup. Maybe you want to do some other things. There's lots of ideas. So if you have a go at creating something fun with nettles, please tell me all about it. Now, do you know what? I'm going to do that poll again because I want to know. And be honest, if your opinion hasn't changed, if you still feel the same, it's absolutely fine. But I'd love to know if you think anything differently now. So tell us again after our little uh, nettle session do you love them do you think they're all right do you hate them or do you not really care about nettles that much and all of those answers are fine I'd love to know just what do you think about nettles now and maybe if uh, you didn't care before now you know a bit more about them you might have a new opinion or maybe you thought they were all right but actually now maybe you don't care or maybe you hated them before and now you love them. Who knows? I'd like to find out. That's why we ask, because we care what you think. That's why we're all here. All right. And if you guys don't have nettles in your garden, so I know not all, of you, not all of you do have gardens, just head on a walk. They tend to grow everywhere. <laughs> all right. Let's see what people say. Yeah, here we go. It has changed, actually, Lizzie. We have influenced nice. people's opinions. Yay! <laughs> Okay, so Josie, let's do sound of the week. Let's yeah. get going. You're right, because it really, really is time. <laughs> okay, let me open up the screen that I need to open up. Let me hide some things that are all in the way, of course, as always, buzzing everywhere. Okay, so. It's all over my desk. <laughs> <laughs> right then, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share sound and I'm going to share this screen because our sound of the week is a bird you might hear all around your gardens. It's somewhere that might be in your park nearby. It might be in your local area. It could be anywhere really. And the sound is that of the wren. So you might see this little brown bird 
with its little pale stripe and they sing so loudly. They are so small, they're only about this big, really, really tiny little birds and they sing powerfully, like you wouldn't believe. If you get close to a wren, you know, because it will sing right in your ear and it will sing so amazingly. And they have this very distinctive song. So I'm gonna let you listen to it and then we'll have a quick chat. So let's full volume you all, are you ready? Let's go. Woo, louder, there we go. <laughs> I love its tail that sticks up as well. I just love it. They're so cute. <laughs> They're really cute. And it's that song, which is really rapid fire. The bit you want to listen out for, if you want to know if you're hearing a wren, is the bit that they say sounds like machine gun fire. It's that really rapid. Rat -ta 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 -ta. So let's see if you can hear that bit and then we'll move on to our last thing. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah, really it does quick. have a sort of a machine gun sound to it. You're right. It does. Obviously, I picked a video which has just mostly bombs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, team, I would love to play that forever because they really do sound lovely, but they are uh, going to take too long. And we've really overrun because that's standard. Okay. We, we get excited about everything, don't we? <laughs> we do every time. OK, every time. so challenge this week, guys. And I did forget. I'm sorry to do the sound of the week. Um, oh, yeah, Lizzie. I know, I'm sorry. How did we forget? <laughs> um, so challenge time. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. It's all to do with how we can help wildlife at home. And I know that a lot, some of you guys don't even have gardens. So we are gonna call this Small Space Heroes. These are top tips for helping wildlife. If you've got a small garden or maybe even not a garden at all, there's lots of options here. And if you do have a big garden, you can add these in too. That's what's so nice is that they're meant for small spaces or no space at all, but you can use them in, your, in any garden. So, our first tip is to add flowers. It's World Bee Day. Let's add some flowers. So you can, if you've just got windows, you can have a window box. Or if you've got a big garden, you can have a window box as well. That's what's so nice. We can hang things up on the walls as well. Like on fences, you can put buckets on your fences or even hanging baskets on walls. So you don't need that garden. You can have pots if you've just got a balcony or just paving, add pots in. And what's really nice is that all of these things are really good for herbs. And herbs, they smell gorgeous like lavender or rosemary, but they're also fantastic for our wildlife like bees and butterflies and things. So we recommend putting in a few extra flowers. And if you want, you can have things on the walls like climbing plants that go up and up and up like ivy and honeysuckle. I've just put in some honeysuckle and it's twirling all the way around and it's really beautiful to put on our on our wall in our garden okay let's leave some grass so don't mow it all maybe talk to your parents about this have you got either a small bit of grass at home or if you don't have a garden but you've got a bit of grass by the road that you look after maybe you could leave that to grow long and there's some things called blue hearts maybe you've seen them as you drive around They're, they look a bit like this people are putting them on their road verge grass areas to show that these areas are for wildlife and they're not mowing them so that flowers like daisies and dandelions and all sorts of wildflowers can grow to help our pollinators so if you guys want to get involved we are going to send you a link all to do with the blue hearts campaign and maybe you can make your own for your own word for road, road verge that's helping um pollinators and you can show everyone how you can help and decorate them and it's really fun so let us know if you have seen any blue hearts anywhere you can add some water, whether it's a bird bath and it doesn't need to be a new one, it could be an old dustbin lid. It's so cool. We can reuse lots of stuff. You can make a bee bath. If you've been with us before, we have mentioned these. So if you haven't done it yet, this is your reminder. So you can make a little bee bath, a small dish of rocks. You could even make a hoverfly lagoon. This we talked about it in our in a previous episode, but there's lots of resources online 
to tell you how to make them to help our hoverflies, which are pollinators, to lay some eggs and things. And you can make bucket ponds. These can go either on a balcony on, or on patio areas, and they're perfect for wildlife. They're just little havens for dragonflies to lay eggs and birds to get drinks and things. Last, um, we can also feed the birds. So you can have bird feeders out. It could be on a balcony area. Um, and you can even make your own. So like our first episode, if you guys have seen that, we made our own bird feeders and got a bit messy. Um, you can always look back at that if you want to learn how. And you can put things on the wall. You can put bird feeders on fences. And even if you haven't got any garden at all, you can put them on your window sills too and look at them as they come fly to feed by your window and then fly away. So they're beautiful and they're, there's an option if you don't have a garden to still feed them. Obviously, if you do have a garden or a small shared space, you want to make sure animals can get in. Birds can fly, but animals like hedgehogs and amphibians need little holes to get through. So you can make holes in fences or leave gaps under brick walls, or even make sure just that your gate has a little hole at the bottom. And lastly, like we talked about in the game, you can make or buy homes for wildlife. So bird homes can go on buildings, you don't need a garden, um, or they can go in trees if you do have them, in shrubby areas. You can put a bat box on your home and even on trees. Insect homes, again, they can go on walls, you don't need the garden, or even on your balcony. And if you do have a bit of space in your garden, you can make that beetle bucket that we will send information how to make too. So there's lots of top tips and our challenge is guys, we want you to try one new thing to help wildlife with this. So we've given you lots of ideas and we'll put them all in the email as well. But we want you guys to do one thing to help wildlife, whether it is leaving your grass to grow, to put in out some extra flowers, to add at home, um, to add water, whatever it is, we want you to just do one new thing, even if you've got lots already. It's our challenge and we'd love to know how you guys get on. Okay. Amazing. Thank you, Lizzie. That was so good. And there's so many things that you can do for wildlife. Clearly, just pick any single one. The simplest one is to leave a bit of grass. Just leave it alone. Just leave a little patch of your garden alone. And the insects and the wildlife will come and do their thing without being disturbed. It is the simplest way. You don't have to spend money. You don't have to spend time. Just leave a bit alone and if you don't have a garden i don't have a garden where i live at the moment all i do is i got a big bucket and i put some soil in it i planted some lavender next to my front door and that lavender is attracting bees and butterflies and it's a pollinator pit stop so all sorts of things can stop there and get some food on their way to bigger places so it is the simplest things you can do you don't need a big space now that is all we have time for today i'm sorry we have overrun by two whole minutes <laughs> <laughs> we just I had too much you, fun <laughs> we always do so much to say and so many great questions thanks for all of your input in the chat it's been lovely to see you all again kind of through our lovely explorers it's so nice to hear from you all and know that you're enjoying yourselves and being wild out and about now the last things to say then our next session is on the 17th of june and it is a special one it is especially for 30 Days Wild. If you haven't heard about that, it is our month long challenge. So we challenge you to do one wild thing every day for the month of June. And it could be little things like taking your shoes off and walking on the grass or in some mud even without any shoes and socks on. Or it could be climbing a tree one day, or it could be having your lunch or your dinner or your breakfast outside one day, or it could be camping out under the stars. That would be amazing. So it can be big wild things or it can be little wild things, but we challenge you to do one wild thing every day in June. And if you need ideas, if you want some fun and a pack to go with it, you get stickers and all sorts, go on our website. I'll send you a link in the email anyway, but you can sign up there and you can get a pack sent to you with loads of ideas, resources, and everything you need to get involved. So that would be really fun. Tell all your friends. You can do it as a school class. You can do it as a business, as an office, as a everybody. Everybody is welcome and to enjoy that one. Other things I need to say, check your emails because I'm going to email you all about the stuff that Lizzie's been telling us with resources and things. And remember, if you've just joined us, if this is your first session, 
you haven't missed all the others, all of our 10 other sessions are on our website too, online. You can have a look on there and watch them all back because all of our recordings get on there free for everyone to enjoy. Okay, wonderful. So tell your friends all about it. Last thing then is for me to say goodbye and to leave you with this month's gallery. You've been sending me wonderful things that you've been up to, pictures and stories, and I've put them all into our PowerPoint gallery so that we can share it with you now. And if you'd like to be in the gallery next time, we would love it. You don't have to be in the picture if you don't want to, just send us something about what you've been up to and I can make it into something on our PowerPoint. It'd be really lovely to share. It'd be making string nestle or nettle string, sorry. You, you could never show know. bracelets you made with it. You could show the beans you've been growing. We did planting seeds a little while ago. How are your seeds doing? Tell us all about it. Anything you find in your garden. Right, we need to get out of here. So I am going to say goodbye and turn off my camera and start that presentation. Bye, everybody. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, enjoy the pictures and let us know how you get on. And we'll see you on the 17th of June. See you later.